Hello everyone. Greetings from India. This is Nirbhay Chauhan from Eklavya Self Learning Tutorials. Well, today I will be giving a brief presentation on the topic of BIM, IFC, and code compliance combiningly. Well, in this presentation, we'll be discussing the scope of code compliance in IFC, that is the backbone of the BIM. So let's begin with a short abstract well as we know there has been an extensive amount of research which has been conducted internationally over the last four decades in the area of automated and semi-automated regulatory code compliance checking for all the ec industry that is architectural engineering as well as construction industry and the base for such compliance and interoperability that I have proposed is BIM and IFC as IFC is an open format with a large number of entities defined so that has a good scope and a good vast field for this purpose next if you see in this presentation let's start that like what is BIM well is it a software or is it a 3d model of a building or is it a process? Well, let's see the technical definition in paper which says like BIM information modeling is a parametric 3D modeling process that is used to generate plans, sections, elevations, details, schedules, all of the necessary components to document the design of a building. Well, in brief, we can say as per my methodology, like BIM is just a virtual construction whatever construction we do on site it is just a prototype of that construction by using the intelligent virtual 3d components we can say libraries or families by combining all those things or defining by themselves to construct a whole new building which could be utilized virtually for further operations like next we can begin with so now let's see BIM in layman terms well, BIM begins with 3D digital building model, like I have told earlier. It is a true BIM model which consists of the virtual equivalence of the actual building sections used to create a building. So these are the virtual components or the virtual entities. These intelligent elements are the digital prototypes of the physical building elements, such as the components like walls, windows, columns, beams, slabs and all the MEP fittings things so we have to combine all those digital models to make a whole new building which could be set as a BIM model next if you see a short history of BIM like in 1962 the Douglas C. Engelbart had in paper augmented human intellect then we have the paper for the automatic model review emerges to check for design regularity then the founding of the Center for Integrated Facility Engineering, Lawrence Perkin National Lab for Simulating Purposes. Well, all, all of these papers or researches somewhat or somehow directed towards the term which we are presently using, that is BIM. Next, if you see uses of a BIM model. The very first or we can say the very basic use of a particular BIM model is to get the 2D drawings. We can extract all the shop drawings with a single click or you can cut the sections as per requirement then we can use it for the 3d visualization we can have a very beautiful visualization of the building then we can also use such model for the project management which we can also say 4d simulations like at what time our building uh, construction phase is going on whether it's excavation whether it's foundation process or the plinth beam are we on the first floor then we have the fa fabrication details then we can also use the BIM model for the building management builds of quantities analysis and also facility management which can be done for all the lifespan of the building so there are n number of uses for a BIM model we cannot define by or we cannot brief it in one single picture then we have a basic terminology in BIM like the very first is 3D that is visualization and clash detection then we have 4d which can be referred as construction sequencing and virtual construction 
then in 5D we have costing and estimating, in 6D we usually refer project life cycle management and 7D that's a very essential process for the BIM terminology that is a facility management. So when we move towards the software which is used for BIM, uh, there's a lot of variety we have available. In the field of open source we have a limited software but in commercial ones we have a lot of variety, proprietary ones like Autodesk Revit, Autodesk Navisworks, Bentley Structural Model and there are n number of software. When we see in the open source BIM software, the very first and emerging one is a FreeCAD which is quite impressive. Then we have the online viewer BIM Surfer, BIM UE. Then BIM Server can be also utilized as a very efficient software for like just like Git, GitLab, GitHub we can use it to have the revisions to make count of the revisions and the project uh, faces. Then if we see the very major issues in one of the popular BIM software, not one I should say, there are many popular software in the BIM field which have some very uh, we can say essential drawbacks like there is lack of freedom to user for the modeling there are restrictions to create unusual shapes incomplete parametric modeling there is no support to analytical data or I can say limited support and there is inadequate IFC support when I say inadequate IFC support that means when we export our data to IFC, the information is lost. Most of the user and the professionals say that is a fault of the IFC, but the sad part is a fault of the software which lag behind to export the proper information. Moreover, they do not support the round tripping. When they export uh, their file in IFC format, they are not able to re import or re read that IFC file in a proper way. Many of the essential things or geometric information is lost. We cannot move forward to other of the entities. We are still stuck on the 3D geometry, which is a very essential thing. That information is not able to fulfill. So there are many leading things coming in future, which are still like I can I couldn't see nowhere in the IFC support for the software. But the good part is IFC has a huge library of entities, huge number of entities are be defined with their specific inheritance graph so that's a good part only thing is we need to implement them so i see open source software is a very good opportunity for these things and they are very good scope for this then if you see all about ifc here i am briefing what uh, what ifc is like this is industry foundation classes so let's see in brief like ifc what is it well, IFC stands for industry foundation classes. It is a standard for building information models, not for drawings. It's all for the 3D geometry. Then it enables to exchange information about building structures, elements, spaces, and other objects in a BIM model. Now, what is information delivery manual? How is it supported to work? Like methodology to capture and specify processes and information flow during the life cycle of a facility. Like all the information has to be in a proper workflow, nothing should be lost. That's an integrated delivery. Then model view definitions, what do you want to see here? Like the facility image, handover view, coordination view, structure analysis view. Like the actual IFC files are based on a view definition that determines the scope of the IFC exchange. And the model view definition, that is the MVD, defines a subset of the IFC schema that is needed to satisfy one or many exchange requirements of the AEC industry. And further, if you see what's included in the IFC, like depends on the MVD, then 3D and 2D geometry, properties and attributes, parameters of the entities, relationships, and connectivity. Now moving forward, if you see a brief history for the IFC that begins in 1994 to 2016, so if we have looked at 1994, there was the Alliance for Interoperability between many leading software vendors like Autodesk, Tishman, HOK, Honeywell, Carrier, AT&T, and then in 1997 they had International Alliance for Interoperability, which was a non-profit alliance. It was industry-led and publishes IFC as a neutral AEC product model, which was a very 
very I should say essential thing for whole BIM industry. Then 2005, Building Smart came in picture, which proposed three essential formats: .ifc, .ifc XML, it's XML sorry, then .ifc zip. In 2060, we have IFC 2 by 3, which has proposed, I should say, all the very essential grouping of the entities like architecture modeling, plumbing, structure elements, structure analysis model, and there are a huge scope for all the structure analysis. As for the structure engineering background, I should say the entity defined are pretty good. I should say the, it's a huge library for that. Then the future, I shouldn't even say it's the future, it's apparently going on for the IFC4. Like new geometric, parametric, and other features are, are also included. Then we have many exciting new beam workflows proposed. Then GIS interoperability is also included. But now the only thing we are waiting is for implementations. The leading beam software are not know what are they doing. They are failing for this purpose. So I see they should do it in future. It's very necessary because the exchange of information and the interoperability is a very basic and essential thing. And if I say the open source software, they should also come in picture here. They can do pretty well in this thing. And if you see the benefits of ISC that can be seen, like it, it is very good for the interoperability among different BIM software, no matter what BIM software you are using, but the interoperability will be totally solved like the we will be using the base at IFC and it has a program validation then the facility management handover performance based design model based coordination then the very basic thing on which I have research not basic I should say it's a very detailed thing like the code compliance then we have the ADA compliance American Disability Act then we have the clash detection like the reading industry are using for this then we have the deficiency detection life safety measures and the design collaboration so these are very essential benefits of the IFC that can be used then if you see the global trend for the code compliance like I have made some essential countries and their essential projects if we move to 2000 in Singapore the project of CoreNet that is the construction real estate network so this was the first initiative in automatic code checking and this was funded by Singapore Ministry of National Development and it was aimed to provide an internet based electronic submission system for checking and approving building plans and here the e-plan check addressed this by commissioning an independent platform named Phonex. So now Phonex is an, is an object library written in C++ language where each object is designed to be extensible in order to cover the requirements of other countries also. Next in 2004 in Norway, the project named Statesburg, which was carried forward by the corner work only and this was developed and emitted in Norway and this was driven by Norwegian building and construction industry and supported by Standards Norway and Norwegian building smart chapter and this was something heavily based on IFC standards. Currently they are focusing on the issues of classification, terminology and standardizing rule checking in construction. Next in 2000, I think this will be first, like the USA published, published a general survey administration by the ISC, see, International Core Council. Here the initial emphasis on was given on health, safety and welfare. Uh, they proposed a smart course, which was a product, which was a project driven by the International Code Council. They focused largely on addressing the problem of transforming paper-based codes into machine interpretable rules. The rules are then automatically extracted following a strict mathematical pattern into an IFC constraint scheme. So here the, all the mathematical formulas were handed in nodes were converted into smart codes or the smart formulas. Then in 2004 in Australia, the project named Design Check. This was something proprietary based where both the solid body model checker and the EDM that is the Express Data Manager were considered as possible platforms for automated code checking. This was undertaken by CSIRO and University of Sydney. Here the design check uses object based rules encoded using Express Data Manager that is EDM and the build, building data models in IFC format are imported into the EDM database and transformed into the design check internal model. 
Next, the conclusions that we can make, the essential conclusion, like the computer program rule must be essentially understood by regulation authors, the life cycle of the rule base must be independent of software and schema updates, like all development must be compliant with open standards so that everybody can contribute and use, use such standards and the complying things easily, and consideration must be given to the industry processes of model authoring. This can make the communication between different BIM software and exchange information easy. So here's a small graphic I have made. Like if you see, you're seeing the peak of a mountain where you can focus only on rivet or all the commercial software we can majorly focus. But we are not able to see or we are not doing effort to see whole of the mountain. When we'll try to see whole of the mountain, what we see is the open BIM where all the software vendors or the software platforms can communicate and exchange the information. That's why I, I would like to encourage to say yes to open them and we need to be open as much as possible and encourage the use of IFC and do some contributions for its research which can be essential, I should say pretty much essential for open BIM movement and the problems that I've discussed will be pretty much solved. So there are some of the research papers that I've referred. There are many more also. Then if you have any questions, you are free to ask and query in the comment section below. Or you can also refer my Facebook page. Or you can also see my blog. I have given the uh, links in, the, in my descriptions. So that's all my dear friends. Thank you so much. Uh, goodbye. See you in next presentation or any tutorial. So this one is uh, from Make Love We Are Self Line Tutorials. If you like this presentation, please uh, like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much once again. Goodbye.